Good morning. Happy Easter. I'm so excited to bring this to you today. We, we made it. It's the last day of Holy Week and for a lot of us this has been a really difficult week. Um, and so I just hope this brings you some joy and encouragement today. Uh, today we're going to be reading in John chapter 20 and my girl Mary shows up again and I just I love her. You guys know this. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for until then they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been laying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I, I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't ascended to the Father, but, I, but go, find my brothers, and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord, and she gave them his message. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, Thomas was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand in the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand in the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Wow. Hey, you know, friends, some of you have been on this journey and, you know, you like the paintings, but Jesus isn't your thing. And I've been praying for you specifically. Um, just like me, I didn't, I didn't think I was supposed to paint Mount Emily. I've painted Mount Emily many times before, and I thought I was hearing wrong. And, and until God opened my eyes to why I needed to paint Mount Emily, I, I couldn't have seen it. So I'm praying that as you've been on this journey, that you know maybe you've heard of Jesus before, but maybe something different is happening in your soul where you're like, I, I kind of get what she's saying. Um, and God might be opening your eyes. And I, I really hope that that is the case. And if that's the case, I would be thrilled. <laughs> Just like Mary, who I love, she's the best. Um, she was healed of seven demons came out of her. She was a prostitute because she had to to get to survive, and 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 yet she she's the main person, the first person Jesus comes after. She's.
she's the first person to share the gospel of Christ. So he's, he's after everyone's heart. He's after your heart. And I pray that today is the day you decide to believe in him. I love you. And all you have to do is just pray in, in your heart that you believe in him. You believe that he died back on Friday, that painting on Friday, that he, he really did experience that for you. And he really did come back to life. And he really does speak to us every day. And that can be for you. For my friends who have done that, um, the kingdom of God is at hand. This is a powerful day, friends. Um, his mercies are new every morning. And the kingdom of God doesn't look like what we think it looks like. The kingdom of God looks like mercy. The kingdom of God looks like peacemakers. The kingdom of God looks like those who fight for justice. The kingdom of God are, is those who are persecuted for doing right in this world. We have a job to do, and, and, and you've watched me do these paintings, and I need you to hear you have a gift in you that is vital to the kingdom of God that will bring joy to those around you. You have work to do. Our, our world um, is God's creation. It's his world. And it's our job to reflect the light of Christ back to those around us. We are called to love our neighbor as ourself, to do good to all. And I pray on this Easter that the renewing of your heart to God, the renewing of your heart to God would be like this painting where God's always been in the background. That gold leaf is representative of the Holy Spirit. God, this is his creation. He's always been in the background and, and he shines through. And when, we, when, he, when the sun raises up and shines on us, we are reflectors. That's our job, is just to reflect back what he's done in our hearts. And I pray that this, this Easter, so many of you I know are going through difficult times, I pray that you could reflect back to God, even in the dark times, and reflect back to God, even in the good times. Because there's a world that's dying to meet him. And we need to be like Mary. We need to be like Mary. He's the great gardener. It's no, no joke that she says, I thought you were the gardener. He is the ultimate gardener. And he wants to create something new in you. And, and to do amazing works in this, in this world. Mir miraculous things. We can move mountains. Our faith can move mountains. And I pray that um, this Easter would just be a blessed time for you and a time that you reflect back on the miracle of what he's done for you and that you submit and say, God, you're the boss of my life. I want to walk forward today, moving in how you want me to live, doing your work and, and growing in you. So I love you. I've been praying for you. And thank you for going on this journey with me.